Hello again folks in 113. Uh, today we're going to be covering the last section from chapter 9, specifically 9.3. Okay, here's the calendar. Okay, where are we? Today is Thursday, April 8th, so as per the schedule we're going to cover section 9.3, right? Good. All right, the packet that I have for you today is kind of hefty. As an afterthought, I actually uh, just completed a, another diagram that is not stapled to this, but I think I might include it anyway. Um, anyhow, these are the tables and references that I swiped from your textbook. Um, if you read these, all right, uh, you should be well acquainted with the material. I threw in another one of my empty diagrams just because there's some terminology I want to um, nail down and specify. Uh, here's more of that from the book that is pertin pertinent, right? and then there, there are the examples. There are six of these. And I left the solutions here, so in case you don't see this, you can in fact read this. All right, I'm going to go through, uh, ideally, the whole six of them. and. When we get to number five, I just did this this morning, um, just to help uh, walk our way through it, I actually made an extra diagram. It isn't important, really, it's just a drawing um, to emphasize some of the features. All right, um, and question six, there is a reference to having to construct a table. All right, this is easier said than done. I mean, uh, pardon me, it, is, it, it, it sounds complicated, uh, it's vice versa, all right, but uh, it's actually really easy. All right, so I'm gonna just show you how to do that, and then we'll be finished, okay? Um, now, to give you uh, an idea of where we're at, especially if you missed either of these two, all right, we're doing uh, section 9.3 today, which is why I put this in red. Um, <clears throat> the material to this point all right, uh, has consisted of the following. All right, in section 9.1, all right, uh, the subject of mathematical systems uh, was brought up, was discussed. All right, and mathematical systems are something that are basically a set and an operation. All right, they would use more precise terms, binary operation, you know under so, all right? And the set would be a set of elements that are numbers that are, you know, uh, apply that operation. Um, then there is the, the topic of a more specific condition, uh, whether you have a group, all right? And then the ultra precise, um, ultra specific example would be a commutative group. Okay, so that should be, um, you know, takes some getting used to naturally, but that's old news. All right. um, last time, uh, we got into the subject of finite systems. Right. And finite systems are systems that have a limited character set, meaning there's only a specific predetermined number of elements. I hope this isn't too tight, too dark, rather. Um, this is, uh, section 9-1 was essentially systems in general, which could include infinite systems, like the natural numbers. Right. But finite systems have um, a limited uh, set. Okay, and there's still a binary operation. Uh, what was important, really, was uh, the shortcuts, I would say, uh, via the use of tables, and that will still be useful. So if you hadn't seen that, uh, or if you can, uh, you know, go back and consider that first before you get into this, because uh, I'm going to have to assume that you know a lot. I'm going to review, certainly. All right, but uh, 
uh, how to read tables was really the, um, the most key component of section 9.2, using shortcuts, right? To see whether you're a group or whether you are a commutative group, okay? Now what we're gonna do today, hopefully I've chosen the red, I have so many red markers. Um, we're gonna discuss something called modular systems. The parlance of this book is modulo. I like to say modular. I don't think there really is any sin in that, but these are called modulo systems. All right, specifically, they are finite systems. Uh, which means that they are also cyclical. They repeat. And what will be interesting, and uh, really the point of this section, is um, to use a certain notation. This may look a little alien at first, but we will get acquainted with the notation of a modulo system. Right. What is um, tricky, perhaps, in both of these cases, is that um, both of these really require you um, to adjust to a system that is not normal. Right? They require adjusting, at least initially, to sort of an unusual arithmetic. And that is what usually turns a person off, unfortunately. They go, hey, this doesn't make sense. You're defying the logic that I have assimilated a long time ago, all right? But uh, don't talk yourself out of it, all right? Just bear in mind, this requires adjusting to an unusual sort of arithmetic, all right? Two plus two is not necessarily four in this system. It is congruent to something else, all right? Um, anyhow, we'll, when we get there, we'll get there. <clears throat> now, what we can do is um, translate into this new notation So what we may start with is um, an mathematical system that we will then translate um, to this modulo system. It's really just the notation that we're translating. So let's take, for example, um, in the last section, section 9.2, uh, uh, we had discussed something called clock 12 arithmetic. Right, so if you had uh, what is referred to as clock 12 arithmetic, which is really just adding in a set of 12 characters. Uh, 12 elements, right? The set look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's pretty intuitive, right? We're talking about clock 12 arithmetic. Here are 12 elements in the set. Right? It meets the first requirement of a system that you have a set to begin with. And then the operation under which uh, this would occur um, was uh, addition. Right. 
I use the term under addition. Now what we will do to adapt this to this new notation, firstly, is um, we're going to change the appearance of the elements. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take almost the same features and change the appearance of the set, right? So the set will, instead of being starting at one and going to 12, which would be intuitive naturally, right? We're gonna start at zero. And then stop therefore at 11. All right, so because you're starting at zero, you're incorporating zero, there are still 12 elements here. All right. But we're going to start at zero and end at 11 in this instance. Right. Right. The operation will still be addition. But the real change is occurring here. All right. The abbreviation that you are going to see all right, that is in reference to this um, altered form of the elements, the set of elements, is that uh, we will call it a modulo 12 system. Right. Or just for brief, um, mod 12. So the notation that you are inclined to see referring to these situations in tandem these conditions in tandem, is that you will simply see the word mod as in modulo, as in modular, all right? And then the number 12 after it, all right? Mod 12, all right, would basically be implying this condition and this condition, all right? Under addition. Just remember, all modular systems, all mod systems, begin with zero. Okay? Instead of whatever they are. Clock 12 would start with one under normal conditions, but modular systems will be zero instead. Okay? Here's a, a sort of um, a model. That you would follow. Um, whatever modulo, and it's usually abbreviated M, system, Because it is a system that has to have both of those conditions met, right. it'll have M elements, right. meaning the character set again would look like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever it is, up to M minus 1. Right. In the last example, again, if it was 12, 12 minus 1 makes this 11, right? And any other system, it would be the same thing. It would be one short of whatever M is, okay? And then the binary operation. Right. Incidentally, this particular letter is referred to as the modulus. 
Right, so you'll hear that in instructions a lot. They'll tell you to incorporate or use or somehow utilize the modulus. They're referring to whatever the system base is. Right. Incidentally, doesn't that seem familiar, right? We were talking about, um, uh, I think it was this semester, converting Babylon. Yes, yeah, so for four, no. You guys are in 113. So in 114, what happens is um, you end up uh, starting off the semester with uh, converting between base systems. So we haven't gotten to that and we won't until next semester, all right? But um, this is very similar to that, sort of a, an introduction, putting your toe in the water. this and we'll do an example uh, to illustrate the point. Let me start with this question. Here's a question. This is visible. Let me turn around and look. Looks like green is okay, right? Question. If today is Sunday, what day will it be? Twenty-three days from today. Meaning, what day of the week, right? Is that legible? Let me see if I turn the light off. If that helps, I don't think it does necessarily. But need a little bit of light here. I think you can read that. All right. If today is Sunday, what day will it be 23 days from now? Name of the day, essentially. All right. A person could naturally take out a calendar, all right, and then count 23 days into the future. But when you're con confronted with this type of a question, this is a good example for introducing the concept of a modulo system, right? There's basically, to answer, uh, three techniques you might employ. Right. Three methods, if you will. And we'll do basically each one, right? There is to basically draw a clock, right? A funny clock, right? And we'll do that first. It will be funny in the in the context or in the sense that um, it won't have uh, twelve on it, right? Twelve uh, digits around the face, right? It will be a, a modified version of a clock. Right? This will be, shall we say, example one. Okay. Um, or if it is available, and it depends. You know, you could contrive one, of course, but. You might try to use a table to answer this question. That is assuming that a table actually exists already. Otherwise, you would have to make the table yourself. Not impossible, all right? Um, but it might be more trouble than it's worth. It might take up more time, all right? And then there is this third option, right, which is to Consider something that basically division and the concept of congruence. I'm going to walk you through basically all three instances of it. 
in the end, I don't really want to corrupt your opinion. This is really what you're going to do uh, for practical reasons, because it's um, it just involves uh, shorthand uh, abbreviations, writing, all right, without having to craft the table from scratch or draw a funny clock, all right. But this is probably the most intuitive way to think about it. This is probably the most intuitive way to answer this question. All right. I would argue that this is maybe the most practical. All right. Having a system established, a modulo system, all right, for the subject of the, the of section 9.3, all right. Um, but you'll have to be adapted to it first. Okay. Now, um, let me show you what I mean by a funny clock. Well, you know what? Let me give you some definitions first, and then I'll go back into the example. debating what the proper order would be. Forgive me. Let me show you the, the, the clock way of doing this. All right, I may have to unfortunately erase what I just wrote here because I need the space. Um, but we'll do it in this order. We'll do a problem using a clock. We'll do a problem use, utilizing a table that happens to be available. And then the meat and potatoes of this entire section, 9.3, will basically be getting used to writing things in this notation and then employing it, okay? Employing that technique, utilizing that technique. Now, what we would do in a situation like this, the clock way of doing it, um, step one, we're going to translate days of the week. into numbers. All right, starting with zero. Okay. So um, maybe I'll put that over here. Sunday is going to be zero. Monday is going to be one. Tuesday is going to be two. Wednesday will be three. Thursday will be four. Friday will be five. And Saturday will be six, rather. Okay. This is our little key. A secret code, if you will. Not so secret, because it's on the internet, right? <laughs> but uh, zero stands for Sunday, one stands for Monday, two stands for Tuesday, three stands for Wednesday, and so forth. Okay? The next thing would be to draw a circle. represent the clock face. All right. um, I have the good sense to basically make a stencil. All right. As a teacher, undoubtedly, I'm uh, just forewarning you, all right? in your profession, your chosen profession, uh, um, you'll be making a lot of stuff out of garbage. <laughs> Recycled dinner, if you will. Don't eat it. All right. But here, uh, yeah, I made a stencil. Took a plate, cut it, cut it out of a pizza box, and so forth. All right. Anyhow. 
Uh, let me use a different color just because I think it would contrast a wee bit better. So, uh, green? No, green is lousy. So, I'm gonna use black. Good reliable black. Um, You might wonder, well, where, where'd you put the the actual hole that you cut out here? And to answer that question, right, is the rest of my box. <laughs> Isn't it fun? I love, actually, uh, I know I'm really getting off topic here, but I absolutely love brass fasteners, these things. Like, you know, when you're a little kid, you know, especially in grammar school, right? They give you these things to make, like, um, around Halloween, um, scarecrows and... Um, skeleton decorations just because they make the ornaments move well it's going to be useful in this case this contrivance for a uh, sort of a clock if you will all right um draw a circle all right like so all right and give it seven points in this case So what I'll do is, um, I took the time to try to measure these out because I was being very uh, twitty, you know. Um, I will put a mark, all right, around the edge of the clock, right where these lines are. It is the kind of thing that you have to plan ahead, otherwise you gotta get out of protractor. Look, I even made a handle. All right, so here's a point here, point there, point there. There, there, moving around too much. There and there. Okay. Right, and if you want to, um, imagine that that is the center and connect all these points on the edge to the center dot. It's going to be a little screwed up because I'm doing it freehand, but you get the idea. Okay. Something like that. All right. Now, in theory, right, instead of it having 12, 1, 2, 3 written around the edge, our um, fake days of the week clock, right, which only measures days in this case, all right, would start with um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday. Right. It has seven days nonetheless. All tied together at the center of the wheel here. Alright. What better still, alright? Um, label them with the numbers that they translate to. So instead of writing a whole word, the simplicity of having an a Hindu Arabic numeral, right? Zero, the convenience of that. One, two, three four, five, six, right? Now, you have some inkling about what a modulo system is to begin with, all right? The system that we are contriving here would be referred to as a modulo seven system, all right? How come? Because the, the set would start with zero, and it would go up to and include six, all right? But overall, all right, how many elements would there be? It would be one short of what the modulus is, M, all right? So this is seven elements, seven characters. And here you have them illustrated as a clock, all right? Now, if you want, the reason I like this example is because, I, again, I, I feel it is the most intuitive way to answer the question. It is a little weird to have a clock that only has, you know, this many digits on it, all right? But, all right, to physically count, all right, as you go about it, all right, all right, um, you can, you could plainly see how you get to the answer, all right, because it's very, it's very a uh, physical, all right, activity, all right, um, concealing five, but all right, what you could do is you could start at zero, right? Today is Sunday, so it's zero, all right? 
and then count through 23, right? All the way around. It is a little bit tedious, but it gives you a feeling, right? So humor me, all right? I'm gonna try to hold this steady here, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven is ex exactly on Sunday again, all right? As it would be, all right? That's one complete cycle, then do it again, all right? Notice there's no digit for seven, it's zero, all right? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all right? Still not quite 23 days, but we're getting there, right? All right? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, all right? And then where would you predict we would land on the 23rd day, all right? If this is 21, this is 22, all right? This is 23. We would be on Tuesday, all right? Because that is what is standing in place of number two in the cycle, okay? So this is a very hands-on way, literally hands-on as I'm touching it, all right? Way of illustrating the cyclical nature, all right? of a modulo system, whatever the number happens to be, right? The key phrase there, right, is that these systems are cyclical. They repeat, right? They have a maximum and therefore repeat, must repeat. I hope that's not too faint, I'm sorry. I use different colors, incidentally, if you're wondering why, why I keep subjecting myself to green, right? You want to implement as many colors as possible when you're talking, all right? Because if you write everything in one color, it's harder for a person to read, all right? So um, it's my way of trying to be conscientious. If you want to emphasize certain points, write them in a very stark, contrasting uh, color, you know, whatever the board is. If you have a blackboard, you may have to use neon colors, right? some kind of neon colored chalk, right? If you have a whiteboard, then you can use some very contrasting color like red or black, all right? Green is a great color, but unfortunately, this brand of marker kind of sucks, right? Because the greens, I complain about them every day, right? I have a broken record, right? Cyclically, because I'm sick, right? right. Anyhow, our modulo M system, whatever the number, whatever the modulus number is cyclical, therefore it has a maximum, and therefore it must repeat in order to describe uh, whatever situation you have. We answered this question, what was the answer? What will the day be? It'll be Tuesday, all right? All right, now, I like this. Again, it's intuitive, but it isn't very efficient, right? Because as you can see, you know, aside from my having to craft Weird sort of pinwheel here. It's like twisted, right? Right hand broken. Um, um, it's a little, you know, arduous having to do this, right? It's, and the higher that this number is, the less convenient it becomes. Imagine how to do 100 days in the future. You want to count that many times, it's tedious. All right, nonetheless, it will give you a feeling. So we move on to better method now, All right? Um, let me see. Let me give you some vocabulary before I try the table method for doing this. So I'm going to try to preserve this question, leave it here without erasing it. All right. And I'll free up this space here. You already know the answer is Tuesday. Because Tuesday is two. Pull up my projection here. And we'll, we'll make sure that we're clear about some certain phrases. Right. Key vocabulary. Right. Uh oh, turn it off my thing. Don't do that. Wrong switch. <laughs> Okay. Don't 
don't ever feel bad about being redundant, especially in a subject that is kind of alien. Repetition is your friend. You don't want to be boring, of course, as a teacher, but you know, just you know, never-ending conversation that says the same thing over again. But try to present something in different ways, right? Because it will reinforce the concept. So I mentioned this before, and I'll do so again. All right? There's this thing called the modulus, right? A modulus is represented by a little lowercase m. I'm stylizing it to make it look script. Right? And it is essentially the base of the system. Right? That phrase, base, right, will be important immediately when you return, uh, maybe in the fall, uh, for MAT 114. Right? We're at the tail end of 113, right? Right? Um, in a more practical sense, right? What is M? It is the number of elements. Okay. Then we're going to discuss eventually this concept. This is really key. Congruence. Uh, you'll see basically this symbol. It looks like an equal sign because it means almost exactly the same thing, really. But there'll be, you know, a number or some character here, and usually a different number or character on the opposite side of it. So if you see this, affiliate that with the concept of congruence. Right. Essentially, what this means right. two numbers are equivalent if they have. I'm sorry, that's a little bit faint, right? the same remainder. Essentially, two numbers are equivalent. One can be substituted for the other. Essentially, if this condition is met, right? if they have the same remainder, which means that since remainder is part of the discussion, you would ultimately have to divide to identify whether they have these, these two numbers, whatever they are, if they have the same remainder, okay? Um, the very formal way of talking about it, you have in this packet. So I'm just gonna point to it first and then I'm gonna give you my own spin on it because I, I like the way I've described it. All right. The concept of congruence can be found in the second page in the references, all right, in this yellow box. Okay. They use the abbreviations A and B and M, all right? All right. And this is the relationship here, all right? With all its um, modulo glory, in all its modulo glory. Now, um, what I like to do is to write it like this. Right. I'm a little short on space. So I'm going to continue on the red here, All right? A is congruent to B in whatever the mod system, right? 
they usually write that as part of it, right? It's not essential really, but you will see parentheses, the word mod, and then the identifying modulus, right? A is congruent to B in this particular system, right? If A divide by M and B divide by M have the same remainder. This is kind of my own wacky way of writing it, because to me, I find it more intuitive to write it that way. All right? If you don't like it, please utilize right, as it is written in the handout, which is stolen from your textbook, of course. All right. um, I hope that's clear, so let me reiterate. This number is equivalent, essentially, to this number in this particular system. All right? If A, when divided by the modulus, and B, when divided by the modulus, have the same remainder. You could make that claim. All right. Now, there's one more uh, key phrase here before we move on, and I would put it here, but I'm kind of running, I've tucked myself into a corner here, so I'm gonna write it up here just for the sake of space. Um, you will hear the phrase modulo class. Right, there's no real abbreviation for that. This is in reference to tables. essentially is that um, a set of numbers, right, since it will be in reference to a table, it would usually appear as a column, If you notice that there are two numbers or more numbers sort of arranged into a column in reference to a table, right? That means that they all, if they are the same modulo class, right, they will have the same remainder and they'll be written that way, right? What does that mean in a practical sense? It means that one can be substituted for the other. They're essentially congruent, right? One can substitute another. Right. Um, those are the key phrases that you want to have you know by heart, or at least have a grasp of. Alright, so um, let me modify the question. Um, what day will it be, you know, such and such days from now, to illustrate how to read a table. All right. So, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to open up the lens here and proceed.
Um, let us take a similar question. All right. All right. If today is uh, four, all right. What day will it be? Six days from now. All right. The name of the day. This is meant to illustrate um, this situation. Uh, method two. Uh, utilizing a table. All right, if you look If you look in the handouts at the very tippy top of this page, uh, the first page here, right. maybe I will project that just because if I can expand it. You could, this is an established table for a modular seven system. So, uh, let me pull this up and I'll expand it, in which case this might be practical. Okay. Turn that off, and then I just, no, I wanted to see that, please. Right. Let's zoom in on this particular table here. This is the clock adjacent. If today is four, right, what day will be six days from now, right? If you have an established table for a modular seven edition system, all right, what you can do is similar to what you had done in uh, section nine two, which is go to the row that is four and then connect it with the column that is six, all right, and then look for the point of intersection. Right. And you would see that, well, the day is three, All right? And then translate that right. into an actual day. What had we established before, All right? What does three represent? Right. Well, here's our clock. Yeah, it's funny, I'm just gonna zero in on that. Zero is Sunday, right? Uh, Monday is one, and Tuesday we had described as being two, right? So what naturally is the day after that? Right? It would be Wednesday, right? So this is Wednesday. Right? Not too shabby, right? The only, and that would be arguably the most efficient way to do this. You didn't have to draw a clock, all right? You could just get right to the number, and then as long as you have the key that zero is Sunday, one is Monday, two is Tuesday, and three is Wednesday, you can answer the question relatively quickly. Um, the thing is, you don't always have a table, you know? So it would be better to contrive a, a system that is uh, flexible, all right? And in that regard, then we will do things uh, third method here, All right? Uh, taking advantage of division and congruence. show you how they arrived at um, the idea for this particular problem that somehow 4 plus 6 equals 3, right? Because that's kind of goofy, 
right? We just looked at a table, right? The table indicated essentially that four plus six equals three, right? Right, which is what? <laughs> That's peculiar, right? This is why I mentioned earlier the difficulty, the hurdle to get over when you're dealing with section 9, 2 and 9, 3 especially, is that you are dealing with an arithmetic that is unusual. It's not a lie. It's just a different system that you have to acclimate to. How come? Because it's cyclical, right? It isn't an infinite system like the real number system would be infinite, all right? So in order to accommodate a cyclical system, all right, um, just prepare yourself. You're going to get seemingly weird, quite a, weird answers like this, right? All right. So how do we deal with something like this, right? If we try method three, it will help us understand where the table arrived at this conclusion, right? Method three, which involves division and congruence. Okay. Um, what you would start with is basically um, add as you would ordinarily. All right. So in the case of this uh, four plus six, all right. What would actually be under normal conditions, four plus six? What is four plus six, All right? It is 10, right, normally. Most people would accept that, right? This is the way that we've all been taught to this point, right? But then ask yourself, right, two, What does this translate to? And in this particular case, it's a modulus seven system. In mod seven system. In this case, this will have different mod systems, right? Right. In order to answer that question, three, we're going to consider congruence. Okay, so how do we consider the congruence? We're going to divide, okay? So let me erase this because I need the space. My wrist is strangely hurting all of a sudden. All right, all right, what do we know about congruence? We know from our model of congruence that this would be true. Remainder. All right. 
which means essentially A can be substituted for B in mod 7, or mod, mod N, right? What I'm just going to do is basically substitute the values that we have here, right? Under normal circumstances, right? Right? This is... Um, This would be A, okay? So in place of this 10, right, I'm gonna, of A, I'm gonna superimpose a 10 on it just to uh, emphasize this particular example, right? 10 could be substituted for B. The claim is that it's three, right? All right, according to the table. Now let's see if that's actually true, right? Um, this is the claim officially. 10 is congruent to 3 in a mod 7 system, right? If 10 divided by 7 and 3 divided by 7 have the same remainder. So we'll do that to prove that point. All right, I'll write them adjacent to each other here. If you take, basically, I'll do this again, A, and B, and divide them, I'll do them in the, uh, sort of the, old, the division box kind of style of writing it. And divide them by M in each case. We'll see what the remainders would be. This is essentially the goal here. So um, here's 10. And here's the division box. And here's the modulus 7. And here's three that is being claimed by the table as being the, the stand-in substitutable figure. And here's the same situation, right? They should, these should have the same remainder. Right. This versus this, okay? So let's see. Um, I'll see if this green will be a nice alternative, not to confuse it with anything else. How many sevens can you squeeze into ten? Right? Just one, right? We don't really care about the quotient so much as we care about the, the portion of the quotient that is actually the remainder. But here is the minutia. Here's the fine details of what would happen, right? One times seven, you would plop a seven here. Ten minus seven, you would get a three. And we're not doing decimal division or even fractions. We're doing a basic division, which is just to write the letter R for the remainder and then whatever this last digit is, right? So the remainder would be three in this case, right? Now, when you get over here to this part, all right, you'd say, um, how many sevens can you squeeze into three, all right? And the answer to that question is, weirdly, what? Well, you can't, right? That's too small, right? The, the dividend, the thing on the inside, is too small. That doesn't mean it is um, impossible, especially if you were, were doing decimal division. What you would do to tide yourself over is to say, well, I can't fit any, so I'm going to put a zero here, all right? And then, just as before, one times seven is what you write here, all right? It would be zero times seven that you would put here, which is just zero itself, all right? And the minutia would work out like so, all right? Z uh, 3 minus 0 would be 3. And you'd write this as remainder 3. So lo and behold, you do indeed get the same remainders. Right? 
Therefore, the number three, all right, um, can stand in place of the number 10, all right? Now you might say that, uh, why specifically three, all right? In our modular seven system, look at the character set, all right? It's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all right? This is a mod seven system, meaning it has seven elements total, starting at zero, and in this case, it's one short of the modulus always, so it'd be six, all right? Does the number 10 fit anywhere in here? It doesn't occur, why? Right? Because it, it, is, uh, it, it maximizes at the number six, all right? Before the cycle even begins, you, you, you go up to six and then it stops, right? And then you must go back to the beginning again, all right? It's cyclical. So you can't use 10, right? That is why you need a substitute, right? Now, again, in keeping with um, uh, this idea of uh, modular classes, right, let me blow up this other portion of the references that I have for you. You'll see, yeah, you'll see this page. Right? And it has ellipses down at the bottom. I'll clear this up here. Just expose that much of it, right? This is a table illustrating modular classes. That is things, uh, numbers that are arranged in a column, right? Uh, that have the same remainder, right? For modular seven specifically. 10, as you can see, it has, produces the same remainder. That's really what you're seeing up here, right? This heading up here, these are remainders as a result of division, naturally, all right? And both 10 and the number three would produce the remainder of three, all right? We just saw it, right? 10 divided by seven and three divided by seven. In both instances, you end up with a remainder of three, all right? Never mind what the, the, uh, the quotient, that major chunk of the quotient is, we're looking at the remainders, all right? That is why this can be substituted by something that actually occurs in the character set, right? We will use the number three instead of ordinary 10 to make it conform to this particular weirdo modular system, okay? I know it's a little alien and don't feel bad if you, you know, go, what is this nonsense, right? It takes a little getting used to, the more that you do it, the more it will make sense, all right? It's only natural. And now the advantage of, uh, of this is that you could perform ordinary arithmetic, right? And then just translate, all right? All right, so what we'll spend the balance of time now doing is going through each of these examples for exactly that reason. Exposure, right, so that you get more and more comfortable. Um, let me turn off my projector and I'll try to abbreviate uh, the instructions. Right. Let me turn the projector back on. Nice lamp, probably. Okay. This uh, official first example, we did we technically already, but. This official first example has three parts, so I believe we have carpal tunnel out of nowhere. I'm going to do what I'm inclined to, which is uh, partition the board here, so I can get away with doing three things if I keep myself in check. Okay. Right. Uh, this will be example one on the handout, which again is from this packet. 
And essentially the question is, um, which number from the set Which number from mod 7 system, that is, what looks like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, are the following equivalent to? Now this is regular ordinary 60, right? regular ordinary 84, all right? and regular ordinary 412. Which number from mod 7, in other words, what would 60 translate to out of these choices? What would 84 translate to out of these uh, numbers? And what would 412 translate to out of these numbers? What we're going to do is essentially, in all instances, divide by 7. Right? And compare right, to um, mod 7 elements. Okay. All right, so in this first instance, you're going to take 60 and divide by 7, all right? The traditional box style of writing division. In the United States, we orient it like this. Um, 7 goes into 60 roughly how many times? All right, 8 times, right? And the, diff the minutia, the fine details of what would be going on is that you'd have 8 times 7 is the number that goes here that is close to it. All right, so 60 minus 56 is four. And since we're not doing decimal division and we're not writing this in the style of a fraction, it would be four over seven, four sevenths, right? We're just gonna simply go, all right, well, this remainder is four, all right? All right, um, does this character show up, this element show up in the system here? It does, all right? If you wanted to, I mean, you could test it to see, all right, I'm gonna divide seven. Uh, this is a bit superfluous, but just so you don't worry, I'm, this is the only reason I'm explaining it. If you were gonna go and test the number four, all right, seven uh, div uh, divided into four would be zero, right? And then zero times seven would be zero, and you subtract and you would end up regardless with the same remainder, right? So how do you answer this in a very fancy way? All right, you would say 60 is congruent to 4 in mod 7. Okay, that's it. All right. These are um, uh, the same modulo class. I wish my wrist would stop hurting. All right. Next one, all right, same process you get because we're talking about a modular seven system, we're gonna divide by seven, all right? So I'm gonna draw a traditional division box here, divide by seven, all right? Um, I believe that is exactly 12, right? Uh, you could do a piece of design, memorize multiplication tables. Seven times 12 is exactly 84, but well, let us say you didn't know that. So we'll do a piecemeal. How many sevens can you fit into eight? roughly one, which is seven, and the difference is one. And then you would drag down four, all right? And seven goes into 14 exactly how many times? Two, all right? Don't panic that you get a nice answer. <laughs> Don't really we want a nice answer. There's something that is perfectly divisible, right? Uh, 14 minus 14 is zero, right? 
which means what? That the remainder would be zero, right? Does this character show up in here? All right, it does, right? So um, that means that 84 is congruent to zero in a mod seven system. Okay, one more of these. Uh, let's see, uh, 412 divided by seven, all right? Seven doesn't fit into four, it's too small, but seven goes into 41, roughly how many times? Five times, right? Which is 35. And the difference of 41 and 35 would be six. And you drag down a two when you readdress the question. Uh, seven goes into 62, roughly how many times? Seven times nine would be 63, right? So that's too much. So it would have to be eight again, right? And the difference, and it would be 56 you're subtracting. Right? The difference of 62 and 56 would be just 6. Right? And again, it's not decimal division, so we're going to end with remain to 6 here. Right? This 6 is one of, in the character set, right? so it's totally legit. Right? Uh, 412 is congruent with the number 6 in a mod 7 system. Right, meaning one could be substituted for the other, essentially. Okay. All right, now we'll look at um, multiplication, since that's the other operation typically, or some other options here, subtraction looks like. Uh, look at example two, there's three of these. All right, now I'll sort of abbreviate this, just not to have to project it again. I like to project things, but um, uh, I am a little worried because I bought this that the bulb is cheap. <laughs> and it's not going to last me. And it's a nuisance to turn it on and off, of course. Because it takes boot up time. Anything to slow you down. Right. Um, gripe, gripe, gripe. Right. Um, here's example two. Uh, this says to evaluate, eval is usually the abbreviation in math speak, right, to evaluate, which means do the actual uh, operation, right? Evaluate each of the following. In a mod nine system. All right, uh, what do you have here? You have the expression seven plus eight in this instance, and you have eight minus five. And then over here you have actual multiplication that I alluded to, seven times five, all right? Start out by doing the ordinary arithmetic. translate to mod 9, right? What does that entail doing? Well, we're switching things up here, folks, right? So we have been doing modulus 7 to death now, right? Mod 9 is we're going to be dividing by 9, right? And then comparing to the character set. Uh, if it's modular 9, right? Remember, we're going to still start at 0, So we have, I don't have a lot of space here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Remember, it's always one shy of uh, the actual modulus 9, right? The identifying uh, system base, right? In this case, we'll, we'll start at 0 and we end at 8, right? There's still 9 characters total, right? So, in this instance, all right, what is ordinary um, 7 plus 8? Right. Ordinary 7 plus 8 is the number 15. Right. 15, as you can plainly see, is not one of the characters in the modular 9 system. So, 
Uh, we can't use it, we need an equivalent. All right. How do we arrive at an equivalent? We divide by the modulus and then compare it to the set field, All right. the remainder. Compare the remainder to the set. So here is ordinary division of 15 by 9 in this case, right? 9 goes into 15 roughly how many times? One time. Right? That is 9. And the fine details here would produce a 6. Right? 6 is the remainder. Right? 6 is one of the characters in this set. So what we would say, and it might be a little weird to do this, we're normally used, at this point we're only used to having a regular number, never mind an algebra, pardon me, an arithmetic expression, but what you would say is, okay, the expression 7 plus 8, that is congruent to 6 in a mod 9 system. Okay, that is the solution, essentially. All right, next one. Uh, what would you get in this case? All right, uh, do the ordinary arithmetic. What is eight minus five? Um, it's just three, all right? Before you attempt to divide, you know, you could space, it isn't wrong if you do, you'll end up with the same result regardless, but um, look at what you have here. You have the number three, all right? Is the number three already in the character set? It isn't beyond the, uh, the, the, the realm of uh, mod nine, all right? So you really don't need to do this, all right? You could, right? You could take three and then divide by nine, and you will logically get through it the same way. Nine won't fit into this. So nine times zero is zero, and you would still end up with a remainder of three. Okay? So what does that mean? The expression eight minus five is congruent to three in a mod nine system. Okay. All right, one more, we do a multiplication problem, all right? Do the ordinary arithmetic, then we translate it, all right? Seven times five is 35, right? Uh, 35 is definitely beyond the scope of modular nine elements. So we will then divide 35 by nine, all right? And then see what the remainder is. 9 goes into 35, roughly how many times? Uh, if it was 4, it'd be 36, and that would be overshooting it, so it would have to be just 3, in which case we're going to subtract 27, right? Notice something, that's a uh, beat a dead horse, but um, the reason that I can get through the arithmetic is really just because I have multiplication tables memorized, which is why you folks that are in the, the you'll be in the position um, uh, teaching elementary school students or maybe middle school students, please make sure that they memorize that, right? In spite of what anybody tells you, all right, it's really imperative for, you know, for uh, strategic thinking, all right? So anyhow, uh, what is the difference between uh, 35 and 27? It should be 8, right? Which is like right to the wall, all right? This is remainder 8, Right. We did manage to uh, get this in here. So, uh, what does that mean? It means that the operation, pardon me, the expression of 7 times 5, let me just not to conflict with this, um, is congruent to 8 in this weirdo modular 9 system. Okay. This is the solution here for part B, and this is the solution here for part C. All right, it takes a little getting used to. Again, you, you are kind of, if you feel any conflict, where does it come from? It comes from the, you know, the resistance of like, wait a minute, you, you know, why should uh, uh, five equal eight or whatever, <laughs> you know? I, I sympathize really, right? But it is its own system, right? It isn't lying to you, it's just a little bizarre.
All right, what are you gonna see now uh, for example three? This is a little bit more tricky, I feel, right? And then four, right? Because uh, it, it is something more like an algebraic equation, but we don't really employ the techniques of algebra. All right, so what I'm alluding to here is this. All right, example three, it has its three parts as well. All right, so again, I'm going to sort of abbreviate what the instruction is up here and try to confine myself if I can help it. I may have to put back my borders here. Um, here. This is essentially the instruction, essentially, for example, three, right? Find right, the positive number less than the modulus. that would make each statement true. All right, so this is another three-party here. And in this case, you get um, a bunch of weird stuff, so let me write it first, All right? You end up with an expression three minus five right, as part of this um, statement about congruence where the question is here in a mod seven system. Right. And just for contrast, what you're gonna see is the question, uh, the void will be basically moved around in these other subsequent examples. So um, in the second example, you'll have to look for the, the, the number that should be sitting here. Minus four. That is congruent to three in a mod five system. And then the question here. And is it congruent to seven in a mod eight system? Okay. Um, you're gonna, this is a little, like the first one is mostly straightforward, right? It is just an example of the type of problem that you had done just a few minutes ago, right? The only uh, difficulty here is that when you do the ordinary arithmetic, you're gonna see that it's gonna give you a negative number, which is not what you're looking for. You want a positive number, right? That happens to be less than the modulus. So let me fill in some voids here, all right? We want a positive, all right? And the modulus in this particular example here would be a number that happens to be less than seven, right? So we need a positive N that is less than seven. Right. How come? Because this is the character set. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six again. Alright. So. Fun fact about this. We know already that adding multiples
of 7 in a mod 7 system. Results in a sum in the same modulo class. Now, just to reiterate that, because that is a mouthful, right? We're going to take advantage of this fun factoid here. We already know that adding multiples of 7 in this particular case, because this is a mod 7 system, is going to result in something, a sum, technically, because it's adding, right, in the same modulo class, which in a practical sense means what? Same remainder... Which means what also? Substitutable, for lack of a better phrase. Okay. So, watch what happens. All right, I'm probably going to need the space here, so I'll just free this up. And I'll put it back later. Watch what happens if you just try to do the ordinary arithmetic in this case. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fault you for, for starting with that, right? But watch what happens, right? Three minus five would produce negative two. And we would already hit a wall because we're looking for a positive number and we end up spitefully with a negative. So we can't do that, right? What we do instead is this. We try to conceive of a number that sits in place of three here, right? And this will be a sum in this case that's plus seven. How come? Because we need to basically remove this we need to substitute because this three produces a negative. Right. So we're going to take advantage of this by adding multiples of seven, right? Seven plus something, we haven't identified it yet. Right. We're going to get something that is in the same modular class, right? Meaning that it would have these things would have the same remainder. And therefore, they are legally substitutable, if that is even a word. All right. All right. Um, if we start with the number here, all right, all right. Um, that's just following this logic. We're going to just add a multiple of seven, seven to the first, right? As opposed to seven, pardon me, yeah, seven times one. 7, 7 times 2 is the second multiple, would be 14. 7 times 3 would be the third multiple, would be 21. We're just going to go with the first one here. All right. What does this produce? What's 7 plus uh, ordinary arithmetic? What's 7 plus uh, 3? 10. All right. If I just borrow what's sitting around here and continue along with this, does this produce a negative number? Or a positive? Oh, I heard this one. Texas. Yeah, I don't know that number. Alright. As a result of uh, basically going one cycle up, that is basically just what this is doing. Adding seven here is going one cycle up, right? Just to avoid this negative situation, right? And we get a 10, right? 10 is something you, we already have as a reference here, right? In our table, just to point at it. That is in the same modular class, I'm sorry though all over the place, but I want to make sure that this is clear. 
I can get away with using 10, right, in place of three, because they're in the same category, or they're in the same class of remainders, the modulo class, that produces a remainder of three. Would this, in fact, produce a negative or a positive right. at this point? Thankfully, it produces a positive, right? So good, right? What does this end up resulting in, right? It makes a five, right? Is five in the set of modulo seven? It is, right? Five is in the set of modulo seven. It happens to be less than seven. That would be the case, naturally. All right, and it's a positive. So to answer this original question, I understand this is a little hokey, right? What is the number that goes here, all right? Three minus five is congruent to five, apparently. Right, in a modulo seven system. This is the answer that specifically makes this true. Right. Right. If you feel a little shaky, don't blame, you know, I don't feel bad, right? It, we do a lot of these and then eventually it becomes more intuitive, but you have to have exposure. Right. So we'll do another one and then another and then another. Let me free up the space here because the conditions are going to change. Next one is this to start with. Um, a question here. Let me do it over here just to save myself a little bit of space. Something. Um, I'm going to reluctantly use green. All right. I'm going to press really dark. Minus four is congruent to three in a mod five system. Right. And in this case, we're looking for the thing, the number here that has to be a positive number that happens to be less than the modulus, right? That makes this entire kit and caboodle here true. Now, bear in mind a couple of things. We're not looking for the, the, the value here. All right. So we're going to have to engage a little mental flexibility. Right. Um, I would start with this. Right. When you're looking on this side of the congruency symbol, right. when you're on the left, um, ask yourself if uh, a couple of things. Right. Is B in this case, which is three, right? Um, an element of mod five, right, just to verify up front. Right? This is what the B would be right there, right? Right. Um, well, let's see what mod five would be. It would be zero. Put this in a contrasting color. Mod five would be the character set zero, one, two, three, four. Right. Three is apparently, you know, an element, right? They don't have anything goofy here, right? Right. 
right, next thing would be, in this case, in ordinary arithmetic, uh, 7 minus 4 would produce 3, right? What would produce three? Well, this involves subtraction. So in this case, um, if you're incorporating minus four, all right, the number that would be here would be seven. I'm hoping, the reason why I'm even bothering asking this question is because I'm kind of hoping that I can get away with not doing stuff, but we have to check first, right? So the thing is, is seven, you know, in the set, right? right. Or a better question, I should rephrase it because of the conditions that's up here. Is seven, Right, a positive number, right, less than the modulus, right, which is essentially the same thing, but it's being, I better go with that. All right, a positive number, and the modulus in this case, because it's modular five, would be five. It's asking, is seven less than five, essentially? No, it's not part of the set, right? No, right? So we're gonna have to go through drastic measures now, right? What that means then, we need, therefore, to find an equivalent. All right, to seven. Seven would produce this result under ordinary arithmetic, but we can't use it because of the, the situation here. It's a positive n, right? The, the weird conditions of this original question were it's forcing me to deal with this in a particular way. All right, so finally, we need to therefore find um, an equivalent to seven, right? That is using characters exclusively from a mod five system. Right? The equivalent in mod five. Right. That is the objective. I need a little bit of space, so forgive me because I need to erase here. And I will put back that because I really shouldn't have erased it. It's good to have this as a reference. This is mod five. If temporarily um, I have this figure as seven minus four being congruent to three right, in mod five, just to be very official. Right? What am I going to translate this to? I'm purposely um, rewriting the junk that is adjacent to it because I don't want to think that it just goes away. Right. It also gives me personal comfort to just sh illustrate that there is a transition here that is very algorithmic. It's step by step. Again, for this purpose, we're going to try to find an equivalent to seven, which ordinarily would produce this, right? But in mod five, so we're not going to have this digit ultimately. Right? All right. In the last problem, we added multiples of seven. Why seven? Because Last problem, we 
added multiples of 7. because we were in mod 7. In this instance, we're not going to be incorporating a multiple of 7. What we will instead be incorporating a multiple of 5. Right. But should we add? That's the real question. Well, we're going to subtract in this case. And the logic behind subtracting is that 7 is too high. All right? So if I were to get an add 5, 7 is already too high. So if I were going to add 5, I would be, you know, exacerbating the situation. What's 7 plus 5? 12. Is 12 in this set? Uh -uh. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do, well, if I, in theory, uh, use a multiple of 5 via subtraction, right, I should bring myself down into the realm of this character set with its limitations. So what happens now? Let me just complete this thought. 7 is already too high, so can't add. We subtract instead in this case right, to make it bring it down to this uh, uh, strict criteria. So what actually is 7 minus 5? It's ordinary two, all right? And the junk that is still sitting around it is this, minus four. And this is equivalent to three in a mod five system. All right? Okay. It's a little goofy, it's a little hairy, all right? This is the number that would, in theory, have to be there, all right? Um, don't worry about combining this with 4. Yeah, I know that 2 minus 4 would be negative 2, but we're not worried about that. We're, from the perspective of this question, we're worried about this being the number that is a positive number. So this would be the positive number 2 that is less than the modulus 5. Definitely takes a lot of mental flexibility to get through this particular problem. Perhaps I'm not doing it justice, and if I'm not, I apologize. All right, but uh, we will get to the solution one way or another. All right, this is basically the logic. In the last problem, we added multiples of seven. We only did it one time because we only needed to, right? To get us a little bit beyond the situation where we would produce a negative, which was a big no-no. All right. In this situation, we're going to incorporate a multiple of 5 because we're dealing with modulo 5 as opposed to modulo 7. But we can't add because if we added, it would produce a positive 12 here. All right, And 12 is not one of these characters. So we subtract instead, right? Yes, sir. and that gives us a positive 2, which meets this criteria here. It is a positive number that happens to be less than this particular modulus of 5. more of these and then we'll do multiplication I think. Still looking for a positive 
positive number that will be less than whatever the particular modulus is. Now, in this particular problem, um, here's what we're given. Ooh. Five minus, the question is here, in this case, the missing, the void, right, so to speak. And in unison, these would be congruent to uh, seven, and modular, looks like it's eight in this case, right? Eight, yes. Okay. All right. A couple of preliminary things. All right. It may seem like overkill, but I, I think it would still be practical. All right. Let's establish what the character set looks like for modular eight. All right. The elements would be zero, one, two, three, four. Five, six, and seven, right? This is mod eight. All right, so our limitations in a cyclical system of mod eight is that it starts at zero and it ends at seven, and we're not allowed to have anything other than those characters, those elements, right? right? In this position, right? These elements allowed only in this position. Right. Um, I would just, because I'm temperamental perhaps, just verify one other thing right? as part of the logic here. The seven here right, um, is seven an element uh, in mod eight? It is, all right. Um, it is one of the characters, so that isn't deviating at all. all right. You probably don't have to check that, but I don't know. I just feel more comfortable if I had. All right. Um, what makes seven? In ordinary arithmetic. Um, let us see. Using this five here. Uh, the closest thing that you can get in a situation like that, in terms of producing uh, seven, and this is still isn't correct, the closest thing would be five minus 12. First of all, 12 would not be allowed because it's in here, right? It's not in the character set. And number two, that would produce a negative seven as opposed to what this is, a positive seven, right? So that ain't gonna happen, all right? You can't. So what we're gonna try to do now is similar to what we had done before, all right? We're gonna try to incorporate Uh, multiples in this particular module system here. So we're talking about mod eight. That is something that basically makes the cycle re repeat no matter where you start, all right? Multiples of eight, because it's a mod eight system. Any number that we use in here, right, is not going to produce seven, right? Let me just illustrate that. All right, if I just stuck it out with five, right, here's a couple of ideas. If I tried um, five minus zero, all right, I would get five. If I did five minus one, I would get four. If I did five minus two, all right, I would get three. And at this point, the pattern starts to show up here that I'm getting further and further away from seven, all right? So 
just sticking with the characters here is a problem, right? Which means that this five is probably an issue. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go, all right, before I even address this question mark of everything that is adjacent to it here, seven mod eight, all right? What I'm gonna try to do is rig a system where I don't have five. This is alluding to that, right? I'm gonna incorporate a multiple of eight, right? Since five is too small, right? Since five is too small to begin with, right? I'm gonna add eight, right? Because adding eight to five, all right, is just going to give me something that is uh, in the same modular class as five, right? That will basically up the ante to one cycle higher. I'll have a digit that, at least initially, all right, um, is suspicious, but it's okay. So I'm going to take this five here, and I'm going to add eight to it. multiple of eight. What do I get as a result of doing that? I get 13, naturally. Right. Now I can test again um, this number uh, in tandem with um, this question mark here. 13 and see if we get something that produces a positive seven. Okay. Um, here's a little thought cloud here. If I did 13 minus zero, I would get 13. If I did 13 minus one, I would get 12. Uh, if I get 13 minus two, these are the characters in the mod system, all right, I would get, uh, what, uh, 11. And I'm starting to approach seven from the correct uh, starting point, a little bit higher up than five, right? So eventually, what would I get to, all right? I would get to this situation, 13 minus six, all right? That would produce seven, all right? That's the culprit right there, all right? So let's just verify if these conditions that were given to us to begin with are now met. This question mark, right? Right? Is this a positive number that is less than the modulus? Well, the modulus we've already decided for mod eight is uh, eight itself, as it should be. And this situation in tandem with 13, which we had to rig up first, all right, is a positive six. All right, does sit, uh, six meet this requirement of being less than the modulus? It does. So even though you might be a little worried, like, hey, 13 don't fit in here, you don't have to worry about it, right? Because you're not looking for that particular chunk of this. You're just looking for something that will work. So what is the outcome here? Six, right? Five minus six, six would have to be sitting in this position to make this true. There's a roofer next door. You're hearing uh, they're uh, stapling, uh, what do you, rather, they're using a nail gun, I believe, uh, shingles to a roof. I wish they were doing our roof. <laughs> it's my way of always, uh, uh, plan in the long run. Slow and steady, all right, better that we do it. All right, number four. All right, 
four is again uh, three problems in sequence. All right, so um, I don't think I can get away with putting these into three columns. Probably not. So let me do this piece by piece. All right, um, this is similar, but it involves multiplication in this case. So what you're going to do is find all term there, positive numbers that are less than the modulus that makes the statement true. All numbers that are positive numbers less than the modulus. This will be the recurring instruction, and then beware, this means that there's going to be more than one. All right, so the first one is, let's see, two times, the question mark being on this side of the congruency symbol, and this will be three in the mod five system again. See if I could sort of confine myself to this much space. I like to put details. A lot of times, it, when I'm doing a problem, uh, once I get used to it, what I do is I kind of fold the page in half and do the actual intricate work on the left side and the details that will help me explain it as I'm doing it on the right side. That's why I'm putting this little scribble here. Um, anyhow. Uh, let's establish some facts here, key facts about a mod 5. All right. In a mod 5 system, uh, this is the character set, right? the elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, all right? and 0, I should say. So this is what we're allowed all right, to have all right, um, in this system. Um, just verify that this is one of those elements. All right, it is. Three is an element. So we don't have to worry about that, All right? Uh, now let's consider uh, what makes three All right, when multiplied. We're going to test a bunch of these. Um, usually up to the point of uh, the last uh, element in the set, right? The ordinary multiplication would be true, right? So I'm going to just borrow basically this half here, right? Two times um, the first character, zero, would be what? What's two times zero? Right. Uh, that would be naturally zero. Right. What is two times one? Two. And then we have two times two, which would be four. Right. And that's a maximum. Just beware. So when we get to past that, when we try the next element here, uh, two times three, what would we get under ordinary arithmetic? We would get six in this case. Six, which exceeds the limit. All right. Now you could just reason it through. All right, once you get to four, all right, what's the difference between four and six? Two, right? So you would go back to zero, right? that's one, and then it should be one is the next thing. It's a way of reasoning it through if you absolutely had to. Now, otherwise, all right, you could try the division, right? We'll prove that that should be one, the equivalent of one. Um, uh, 
uh, you would do, let's see, uh, the 6 here, and you divide, divide by the modulus of 5, n equals 5, of course, and seeing what the result will be. Alright, how many 5s can you squeeze into 6? Just one, naturally. And what is the difference of 5 and 6? 1, so your remainder is 1. Alright, so, um, standing in place of 6, right, what you would have to have is actually this, that 2 times the 3 here, right, doesn't produce 6, it produces 1 instead of 6 right, in the mod 5 system. We're going to keep going forward here. All right, I need a little bit of space. So unfortunately, I have to erase this human me. You still haven't resulted in something that produces a three, though. Right? We've gotten to one at this point, which is progress, but it isn't, uh, isn't uh, done yet. All right, so continuing on, testing. What's 2 times 4, the next logical character here? We would produce, in this case, naturally, under ordinary arithmetic. Eight, right? This, again, is the situation where it exceeds the limit. Right? Eight is outside the scope of mod 5 uh, cyclical system. So what do we do, all right? Um, the difference of four, the actual maximum here, and eight, all right, uh, would be four, right? So if this is at four, then this would be five, six, seven, eight. I would predict three in a case like that, all right? Let's verify, all right? If you did that, you would have eight in here, divided by the modulus again, to see what the equivalent is. How many fives can you squeeze into eight? Still one, and the difference in this case, eight minus five is how much? Three, so the remainder here is three, right, as predicted, okay? So how would you write this situation here? Right. You would write this as two times four, and if you're wondering why I keep putting a box around these particular numbers, it's because we're looking for that number, right, in the original question here. Right. Is equal to what sitting in place of eight? Three is in the same modular class. So this is equal to three, all right? We've finally gotten it. <laughs> We've finally gotten to the number, all right? Now, in theory, we could continue, um, uh, but that should be it. All right, we have gone all the way through up to the last thing. All right. The answer to this question is four and no others. All right, because uh, we have tested all elements, all right? Is four a positive number that is less than the modulus? The number is four and this is five. Yes, we're finished, okay? That was the only one that produced three. Let's do another. Okay, next one. Um, B, you're given this three times something 
is congruent to zero in mod six. Uh, let us establish again that the character set in mod six, the elements zero, one, two, three, four, five, be six elements total, and it starts at zero naturally and it ends in five if it's a modular system. Okay, still looking for something in the same position here. All right, just verifying zero is an element right, in the character set, so we're good. This is going to die. Uh, let me get here. And we'll proceed. All right. uh, you're kind of stuck when you do these, testing them as before. All right, so I'm going to continue with that train of thought. Testing in ordinary arithmetic um, to see what we get. All right, so starting from scratch, all right? Three times what? All right, the very first character is zero itself. Three times zero produces zero, all right? So already we've hit um, pay dirt, all right? <laughs> Save that one. All right, that's definitely one of the answers. We're finding all, uh, it really is not technically positive though, all right? Um, yeah, you know what, that is tech, like, it's funny, because if you look in the solutions here, they had uh, suggested that uh, zero is in fact one of the answers, and it does produce that, but it isn't exactly positive, right? Zero is neither positive nor negative as a technicality, but hey, uh, fine, we'll take it too, right? Um, next one, uh, what is the next character? Pardon me, the next element? One, of course. All right, what does three times one produce under ordinary arithmetic? Three, all right. Um, that isn't zero, so that's not one of the answers. Um, three times two is the next one. What's three times two? Uh, that would be six, actually. And here we have our first uh, stumbling block here, because why? All right, it exceeds the uh, element character set here, so... Um, you could reason it through, all right? If it goes up to five, and then the difference of six and five is one extra space, all right, it would go back one. This sh should be one of the solutions then, all right? But let's prove it, all right? If this exceeds the limit, all right, then we'll do uh, six divided by the modulus of six. to see what we'll check the congruence here. Uh, six goes into itself exactly one time. The fine details would produce a zero. So indeed the remainder would be zero, all right? Which means uh, the alternative way of writing this would be the, the, the second really, it's really technically the first, but the second according to the textbook um, solution, which is this. 2 is equal to, is congruent to 0 here, all right, because of the remainder here. 3 times 2 is congruent to 0 in a mod 6 system. So we have one solution, 0 here, even though it's not technically positive, all right, 0, and now 2, and we're going to ch check some more just to see how many we can get, all right, until we hit the end here. So we're going to continue. Uh, continuing here, we just did, uh, was it three times two? So we're going to do naturally three times three. What does three times three make under ordinary circumstances? Nine. Uh, nine obviously exceeds. If you want to, again, the difference of nine and five is four. So this would be one, two, three, four. I predict it should be a three, all right? Uh, but we'll verify. Take a 
take 9 and you divide by the modulus because it exceeds. All right. um, 5 goes into 9 roughly, again, one time. The difference is 4, and that would indeed be the remainder. Let's see. So I nipped it somehow. Right. Let's see. I do one. Uh, oh, because I'm not using the right number. The modulus is six in the dodo. Sorry. Modulus is six, not five. Ding dong. Okay. Um, six goes into nine, roughly still. One time is the minutia. The difference of nine and six would be, of course, three, and that is as I predicted, three. Okay, so three. That means that you would write this instead, like so. You would write three times the number that you're looking for here, three, uh, is congruent to um, remain to three. All right? Yes. All right? Now, we're looking for the situation where it's zero. That ain't it. All right? Unless we continue. All right? Let's continue until we can't anymore. All right? Um, uh, three times four, uh, would be 12, which if you did the work here, uh, let's see, just without having to make jumps here, um, <clears throat> 12 and six goes into this exactly twice. And that's zero. And in this case, you get a remainder of zero, right? So here we go. We lucky again. All right, this is one of the possibilities. Three times the number four sitting in this position is congruent to zero because 12 can be substituted by zero, all right? So that's four there, all right? All real numbers, uh, pardon me, all numbers, technically zero included, that are positive, all right, greater than the modulus, all right? So we have four, and we really should check the next one. Um, but it's not gonna, that is, and that would be the last time, right? So let's see, three times five would be 15, which again exceeds. So we're gonna do 15 divided by six, six goes into this twice in this case, which is 12 and the difference is three and you get a remainder of three, which is not zero, right? And now we stop because We've hit the limit. Okay, we've hit um, the last character in the set here, five, so no more. All right, these are the positive numbers that are less than the modulus of six. Right. Okay. Uh, one more of these, and then we'll do a couple of word problems, and I promise we're done. All right. I think it's better to sort of dissect these because they're a little tricky, right? That's why I take my time. This one will be brief. Example four, all right, all positive numbers less than the modulus that make true the following statement. All um, in this case, what do you have? You have uh, for part C, three times uh, the question is congruent to two and a mod six system again. We did a lot of the work for this already, so we don't really have to um, because we were just working in mod six for part B. So I'm just going to reestablish this character set zero, one, two. 
three, four, five, and mod six. That's what we're working with. Sorry. Um, so, uh, what produced two, if you remember? Um, did anything produce two, right? It didn't, All right? From the last problem, had anything produced two? Right, in that last problem. Um, and the answer to that is no. All right, this is basically as it worked out. Uh, we got zero, and then we got three, and then we got six, which we translated to zero. All right, and then we got what again? Um, after that, it was nine. Nine, which ended up being three. Um, and then you could continue with it, but the, uh, going all the way up to uh, when we had it after that was 12, right? And 12 translated to uh, zero again. And then we did 15. And that ended up being three. Right. So, had anything produced actually two? Right. No, nothing would ever produce two, and we hit the limit. We tried uh, three times uh, uh, five. All right. So, in this particular problem, there's no solution. No. Right. No solution. All right. We kept getting zero and three and zero and three. Is this? Well. <laughs> My sister was in the hospital. So she just kind of gave me good news. It's my older sister. I don't know what that means. That's a beauty. Another reason why I went through the tedium of doing the last problem was I had the foresight because I did this last night when I was preparing of knowing that the work that had been done would help illustrate this problem. We got zero, three, zero, three, zero, three. It's never going to produce a two, so there's no solution. Okay. Now, um, I want to say that we've gone through the hard part. Right, and what I'm going to do now is um, do the last two, which are word problems with you. And I drew you a little diagram. Let me project the actual problem now. And we'll go down. This is example five you'll see now. All right. All right. Uh, there's a, a diagram that I made for this specifically for this problem, so I'm going to put this here. Clickety-clack. Right, let me turn this on. I think I've arranged it on my screen. And the 
the most convenient way. So, let me turn this off now. And free for space. Word problem like the one you'll see here. Um, Dusty is a security guard, this is example five, at a shopping mall. His work schedule is to work for six days in a row and then he gets two days off. Right? If today happens to be the third day in that um, arrangement, right? uh, that, and Dusty has been on working, just read that again. If to, if to, today is the third day that Dusty has been working. Determine the following. Will he be working 60 days from today? Will he be working 82 days from today? Was he working 124 days ago? All right. When you have a problem like this, a modular system will come in handy. So let's discuss uh, this arrangement. It mentions that he has six days on which means working, all right? And then two days off, which means not, right? What is that total as a cycle? Sorry, I'm dying on me here. What is that total as a cycle? Well, at the end of these, you get eight, right? Right now, I know what you might be thinking. I, I, I sympathize. Hey, a week is not eight days, right? It doesn't have to be, all right? A week is indeed seven days, right? That's the way we have it arranged in general. But this, his work cycle is not going to exactly co coincide with uh, an actual work week, right? So uh, it's not going to lock up perfectly. It's going to be. Eventually it will match, but it will, you know, take some uh, multiples. Anyhow, <clears throat> since we have an eight-day cycle, all right, what we essentially can translate this to is a mod eight system. That's what the sheet is referring to, all right? Now, um, if it's a modular system, then it starts always at zero, all right? And it will end one number shy of the modulus. So it would naturally go up to seven. There are still, again, eight elements total, so it's perfectly legit, right? Now, um, the questions for this problem, right, I'm going to sort of uh, abbreviate these underneath it, right? Let me move this out of the way. And um, I'll write the question more or less underneath it here. Um, I'm going to try, I don't know if this is going to work, I may need to move stuff around the lack of board space, but part A of this, and then part B of this, and then part C of this is as follows. Alright, um, what day, essentially, is he working or not uh, 60 days from now in the future? Um, and then this one is uh, working sorry or not 82 days in the future that is an 82 I swear I don't know if that's better or worse <laughs> And then the last question is, working or not 124 days uh, in the past? Right. So these, are, these two are basically the same type of problem. All right. For the sake of clarity, all right, what I would recommend you do is this All right above the um, the character set here the elements? All right. Um, let us start with zero, and we'll call this uh, W. 
So uh, I'm going to see that it makes sure that it shows up clearly. So I'm going to put a blue working W for working right. uh, above zero, above one, above two, above three, above four, and above five because that would be six days in sequence that the person was working. Dusty. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the last two in the sequence would be not working, so I'll use an N in this case. And then an N here. Okay. Now the conditions that followed it as well, I'm gonna pull this up now, all right, is this, all right? Uh, sorry for the mess. If today is the third day that Dusty has been working, all right, and we're going to start with this zero is working, one is working, two is working, three is working. And we're starting here rather than there. All right. We're going to ask, ask the, answer the question of whether or not he will be actually working 60 days from this point. All right. Now, you could, um, in theory, do what we had done before, which is derive a uh, clock face with eight points as opposed to seven and then go to three, right? And then count another 60 days, right? But that's rather tedious, right? All right, so what we will do instead is we're gonna try to find uh, something that is in the same modular class. Find the number in the same modulo class. In this case, as of 60. All right. That means essentially a character that is going to be something between uh, 0 and 7. And then we're going to go back to this, all right, and then uh, sort of make jumps. All right. So uh, let me do that now. If it helps, let me just uh, label this as well. Uh, technically, this is the first day. This is the second day. Um, he's on day three, right? Third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth, seventh, and eighth. That is correct. I'm sorry for the faintness, but uh, I don't really want to scribble too much. All right. This is first. This is second. This is third. According to their description, and he's on his third day of work. All right. According to the original plan. Sixth, seventh, eighth. Right, this is going to get to be a funny marker. Put that aside. Okay. So, first things first, we're going to find a number that is in the same modular class, all right, as 60, 82, 124. That means we want a number that is somehow in between zero and including uh, zero and seven. All right. So, that means we're going to divide each of these cases. So we're going to take 60, in this case, and divide by the modulus. What is the modulus? It's 8. All right. And work out the arithmetic. All right. 8 goes into 60 roughly 7 times, right? which is 56, and the difference is 4. So the, the number that is in the same modular class, that is, it has the same remainder, as 60, in modular 8 is the number 4. All right. So to answer this question of whether working or not, we're going to start here. All right. And since time is marching forward, all right, we're going to make basically four jumps. All right. Because it would be the equivalent of making 60 jumps, essentially. Four jumps is equivalent to 60. Right. without having to go through the rigmarole. So, here we go. One, 
This is very faint. Two, three, four, right? Starting on the third day, which is the number two here, weird as that is, all right? One, two, three, four is the seventh day in the cycle, and that is uh, not working. Okay? So day three plus four in this modular system is actually the number six, which is the seventh day. I know that that's crazy, right? But to answer their question, uh, this person would be N, not working. That's the end of this marker, I suspect. Okay. Um, continuing. No family now. Next one, all right? It's the same question, really using a different figure. So uh, we're gonna try to figure out what we can use instead of the number 82. So here's 82, when we're gonna divide by the modulus, which is the number eight and then work it through, all right? Eight goes into itself one time, right, which is eight, and the difference is zero, and then you bring down a two, and then what would happen? Eight uh, goes into two, is it too small? It's too small, so you put a zero here, all right? And then zero times eight would be zero, you would subtract and you would get a remainder of two. That means that two, one of the characters that is in this uh, modular system, is equivalent essentially to the number 82. So we're gonna go back to the starting point. Third day is the number two here, all right? And then count two leaps, right? So it's gonna be two jumps, all right? Is equivalent to uh, 82 jumps, apparently. So from here, all right, which he was working, third day in the cycle, one, two, he is now here. On the fourth day, uh, the fourth number, which is the fifth day, I know that's crazy, but more importantly, they're working. So the person is working according to the cycle description. Right. After 60 days, not working, he's probably grateful. All right, those see what, what they are. All right. um, and then after 82 days, not working. Uh, rather working, I should say. Yes. Let me just make this a little bit more dull. Alright, because that's on four. This is a W. W for working. Alright. I'm sorry, I'm reading in the dark here. You can see the side of my ugly head. <laughs> I'm sorry. Looking through my ear and seeing the void, right? Uh, let's see. Good. Um, yeah, one more of these. All right, this one is a little backwards, right? Uh, we're still gonna go through the same process. We just have a larger number to divide into. So <clears throat> we will divide uh, 124, that is the correct day, right? Mm, yeah, okay. And the modulus is still eight as it would be, and the, the minutiae would be 8 into 12 is just one time, and that would be 8, the difference would be 4, break down the 4, readdress the question, 8 goes into 44 roughly 5 times, which is 15, and now we have 40, the difference is 4, and your remainder would be 4, alright, so which means what? It's 4 jumps backward. Oh man, I wish my marker didn't die. All right, four jumps backward. How come? Because we're talking about the past in this context, right? So here we again start on third day, which is the number two, technically, right? So we start with zero, right? right. Here's our starting point. And now we're gonna make four jumps backward. Now, just be careful of one thing. This is cyclical, right? So uh, watch what happens, all right? You start here and you go one, two out of four. Three is seven. 
and then back another one would be six. All right, so you would land on six. As you're going backwards, and you could write if you wanted to just keep it sort of uh, linear rather than cyclical. All right, but th to me, this is a little bit more intuitive. Starting here, one, two, three, four. All right, so you land on six, which is what day? Working or not working? All right, it's not. So, all right, part A, not working 60 days in the future. Part B, working 82 days in the future. All right, part C, not working 124 days in the past. Okay. all the scopic cook here. Alright, um purposely sort of obscuring a lot. Alright, um Example six, we're going to be doing, uh, here's a fun thing. I would highlight this. Okay. A modular arithmetic system under the operation of addition, all commutative. Right. Pardon me, modular arithmetic systems under the operation of addition, all commutative groups. Okay, so what they're asking you in six is basically to prove that. And the, the fastest way to do that without having to check every possible combination of the, of the elements would be to construct a table. So we're gonna start with that. Construct a table for mod five, all right? As a pre preliminary step, let me just tell you this much, all right? Um, decide, all right, what the elements are. Right. If we're talking about mod five, all right. What do the elements look like? All right. Starts with zero, right? And then there will be five uh, elements total. So zero, one, two, three, and it would terminate at four because it's always one shy of the modulus. All right. Why do you care about that? Uh, because the next thing is when you're constructing the actual table, right? These characters are going to be the row and the column headings. Now, to spare you a little bit of trouble, all right, um, I had the good sense last night all right, to uh, give you sort of a scaffold here, all right? Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to project this and we're going to craft the table first, all right? The whole purpose of this is that we can prove that this is a commutative group, which, as you know, has five requirements, and it's easier when you have an actual table established. It may be intimidating, but it actually is very intuitive. All right, so here we go. All right, let me move this out of the way, and I'll just project my table here. And okay, that looks good. All right. All right, so since we're dealing with the mod five system specifically, all right. Um, and we have a nice table here. Um, under addition was the operation, right? Up here, I'm going to write these elements, and along the side here, the same elements, because that would naturally be the case if you have a row and column headings. So, um, let's do that, all right? The first uh, element would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4, all right? And I'm just going to stick with the same color. Down here would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right. Now, we're going to do the arithmetic as we normally would. 
as long as the result, right, as the result is in the set, right, we don't have to translate. No translation. Okay? So, this is the operation, would zero plus zero, right? Even under a mod five system, that would be the same answer. Right? Would zero plus one? One, which is an element, right? So even under a mod five system, that would be the correct answer, right? Zero plus two, same thing. Zero plus three, same thing. Zero plus four, same thing, all right? We haven't violated or exceeded four, all right? At least not yet, all right? If you do it this way, you see the exact same thing, right? What's zero times one, uh, pardon me, zero plus one? One, zero plus two, two, zero plus three, still three, zero plus four, four. Everything is copacetic, all right? And we can get away with that a little bit while longer, so let's do it while we can, all right? What's one plus one? Two. Is two in the set? All's well, all right? One plus two, three. Is three in the set? Also all well, all right? One more chance at this, right? What's one plus three? Four, which is the maximum, all right? Now we're technically going to get repeat the cycle, all right? So, but without having to do the division, because the numbers are relatively small, we could kind of talk ourselves through it in the same way we had done in the last problem. It is cyclical, right? So we're going to jump backwards to the front. What is 1 plus 4 under ordinary circumstances? I'm just going to temporarily put the answer here. 5. But 5 is not in the character set, right? So we would be here, and then we would have to go how much extra? 1, which would return us to where? 0. Which means that instead of 5, we're going to have a 0 here instead. Okay, And there will be similar situations like that. Actually, what's going to happen is you're going to notice that there's a pattern. All right? If 1 plus 4 produces 0 in modular 5 system, all right, then uh, 1 plus 4 would be here right, as well. So you would have the same situation. You would have a 0 here as well without having to go through the trouble of figuring it out. All right? There'll be a, an obvious pattern to this, is the trick to it. All right. It's a fun kind of exercise, I think. All right, let's uh, move along here. What's two plus one, three, that's legit. It's in the character set. All right, two plus two, four, now we've hit the maximum again. All right, two plus three would be five, but we already know what happens when you hit five. Five equals zero, right? Because you go up to four, and then it's one extra jump, which would be backwards because it's cyclical. So we have another situation where we have zero here. All right? That means that where there is a two in tandem with three, all right, that it's probably going to be the same thing. All right? So <clears throat> that would be where. Um, three and two in tandem would be here as well, so that's another position where zero would show up. And do you notice that there's this interesting diagonal line here? Okay. Um, do another one. Two plus four would in theory be six, all right, under ordinary circumstances. But since it is cyclical, once again, all right, if four is the maximum, instead of going back just one leap, how many do I have to go back instead? Two, all right? So from four, I go back to zero, and then one leap forward extra would be one, right? Which means that, again, in the situation where you have um, two in tandem with four, right, which would be here, two in tandem with four, you have the same figure, one, okay? And we've completed this row, right? So I'm going to do this one now. All right, three plus one is a legitimate four, all right? Uh, three plus two is already accounted for, all right, because it's five and that equals zero. Uh, three plus three would, in, in theory, again, be six, but what is six already established as being? One, all right? And now, again, it may become increasingly more apparent to you, 
all right? What do you notice? It goes zero, one, two, three, four, and then here it's one, two, three, four, zero, and then it's three, four, zero, one. What would you guess is the next one here? It's probably two, but just to verify, three plus four, all right, would be what? It would in theory be seven, all right? So if four is the limit, go back three spaces, zero, one, and then two, all right? Four with three spaces is zero, one, two, all right? So you end up with two, all right? And then in tandem again here, you see the same thing. It's just that that's commutative, really, all right? Uh, you would have a two as well, all right? And then you could probably predict at this point, right, what the rest of the pattern is. I'm going to remove these because they're really not necessary, the uh, actual arithmetic. We're just going to keep the things that we have, all right? Look at the columns, even this way. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2. What would you guess is probably here? All right. I would bet money it's a 3. All right. And just to verify, 4 plus 4 is 8. All right. If you want to do the brute force division, all right, it would be the sum of 8 divided by the modulus of 5. All right. 5 goes into 8 one time, and the difference between 5 and 8 would be 3 which is the remainder three, right? Three. It's in the same modular class. This is a complete table, and it's great that we have it, as much as it is a little tedious, and it does get a little, get, it takes some getting used to, all right? We now have something that we can apply the shortcuts from section nine two, which is cool, all right? That will reinforce that skill, all right? So to free up a little bit of space, I'm gonna raise the gobbledygook over here. Try not to move my projection around. <laughs> Right. and free up some space over here. All right, remember, there are five requirements, right? We're talking about something being a commutative group. Well, that's what we're trying to prove, right? The first requirement of a commutative group. Right now, we just have a modular five system, right? We want to know if it is a commutative group, right? Uh, number one, we have to check if it's closed. All right. All right. The formal definition of closed, closure, would be that when you apply the binary operation to the elements, all right, does it produce anything other than those elements? In other words, if you, and the shortcut is uh, anything peculiar. In the, in the table, that's the shortcut, more or less, all right? Do you see some number other than zero, one, two, three, or four in here? Do you see a club symbol? Do you see a five? You don't, now that I erased it, certainly, right? All right, so the answer is, anything peculiar? No, so then yes, it is closed, all right? So that criteria is met, all right? Next one, all right? The second um, requirement is that there is um, an identity element, right? An identity element um, uh, under normal circumstances would be zero or one, right? If we're talking about addition and, multi and multiplication in the uh, uh, real number systems, right? Uh, natural numbers, all right? Um, in this case, all right, we're looking for a three-way tie uh, match, rather. All right. That's the shortcut. So you have a three. Look for the three-way match. All right. That is a row heading, a column heading, and an intersection. That is all the same character. All right. Um, don't do that. Um, you actually find it immediately, right? Because here's a row heading, here's a column heading, and here's the point of intersection. There's a three-way match. It is this, right? So is the identity element zero? Yes, it has one, so that is qualified, okay? If you checked one and one, row and column, you'd see it's two, so that's not the identity element. If you checked two and two, you'd get four. Again, it's not a three-way match. Three and three, you get a one, not a three-way match. 
All right, four and four, you get a three. That's not a three-way match. The only one that would be the, the first one, in fact, would be zero. All right, uh, moving on. Three is if there is an inverse element for each. All right. Now, uh, the model that you would follow in this case is this. Um, you have an element, and the operation in this case is plus, and then the mysterious inverse should be equal to the identity element. We should verify all of these, all right? And we already have the identity element isolated as being zero, so it's not going to be too bad, all right? What are the unique elements? There's only a few of them, all right? So I'm going to put them here, all right, uh, where I have a little bit of space. We have an element of zero, one, two, three, and four. And we're uh, looking for the inverses, if there are in fact inverses, uh, for each of these situations. And we'll know that we have an inverse by this model. All right. Zero plus something, whatever that inverse is, has to be the identity element, which is zero in this case, all right? So uh, let's look for where the intersections are zero in the table. I'll keep that, all right? Zero and zero, zero is an inverse of itself, apparently. It's an additive inverse. Uh, what else also produces zero? One in tandem with four. So four is the inverse of one in this system. That produces a zero. Um, two in tandem with three. Two plus three produces zero. Three is the inverse of two. Uh, what else? Two uh, in tandem with three. We just did that one, sorry. Three in tandem with two. It's just the backwards commutative. All right. Three plus two. Two is the inverse of three. It's just an alternative way of phrasing it. All right. And then apparently four in tandem with one. All right. So good. So in answer to the requirement, is there an inverse for each of these elements in black? Zero, one, two, three, four. The answer to that is yes. All right. Now, um, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. All right. They did tell us in the instructions all right, that we can assume that it is associative. All right. Here, let me just point to this. All right. Um, assume the associative property holds for the given operation, right? And the operation is addition in this case. So we don't have to check the fourth criteria. That is often the case because of the tedium, all right? So the fourth condition would be, is this associative totally? And the answer is yes, it would be. So check, 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 check. Now, the fifth requirement would be the commutative property, which in theory you would have to check as well if you didn't have a table, All right? Is this totally commutative? That means that if you reverse the position and try every combination of the characters, that they produce a commutative relationship that just reversing uh, two terms at a time that you're just gonna get the same result no matter what. Rather than do that, what you can do is employ the shortcut, right? And the shortcut is to check for symmetry about the main diagonal. Right? Remember the main diagonal is, um, I'll put it over here, smaller rectangle here. The main diagonal would stretch from this corner to this corner. This is the main diagonal, all right, which is the top left to the bottom right, all right? And symmetry is basically, do you see the same things appearing on opposite sides of this diagonal line? All right, so, and this does as well. All right, um, let me draw, uh, hopefully in green it will show up. All right, uh, faint or dash, perhaps, diagonal line as best I can. And we will look for symmetry, all right? Um, let's see. Sorry, this is a little bit awkward. All right, I'm gonna try to press really hard so that you see the green line, but my markers are dying. 
and it's a bit difficult. All right, you can kind of see that. It looks like you can. Good. So here's our main diagonal, right? On opposite sides of this green line, do you see the same features, the same stuff, elements? Zero, zero, right? Over here, one and one, all right? Um, so one and one, two, one and two, one, three, two and two, three. It's like a mirror image. Four, three, three and three, three, four, all right? Four, four and four, four, zero, 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 one, one, two, two. And that's it. So I would say, yes, definitely there is symmetry. So this proves that this is a commutative group because it met all five criteria. All right. And that means that. All right. All right. Thank you guys for listening. I'll have the um, uh, all of this stuff available for you so you can print it. All right. Uh, hopefully that will help. All right. So for homework, um, I'm going to turn this off. Actually, you want to do section 9.3. Do section 9.3 in my lab, and then you're all squared away. All right. Again, I would try not to do 9.1, 9.2, and 9.3 in the same sitting because it is a lot, right? Uh, I would say, especially 9.3 is the... Uh, it takes a lot of getting used to, all right? So you learn more in the long run if you do it piecemeal, believe it or not, okay? It will uh, uh, basically give you more practice, you know, doing it in several steps, all right? So I'll see you again on Tuesday, all right? Be careful out there.